Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with exercise 5a of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page 117, and the question is 2. Before I continue, I'd like that you watch my video on the massless rope. This is something to do with Newton's third law. It's something I think you need to know in order to continue these questions. And it ties into the fact that I said in previous videos that people don't really understand Newton's third law. And it's because of what's happening in what I explained in this video that... Uh, that people don't understand it or they think they understand it when they actually don't so look I'm going to assume that you've watched that video and I'm going to continue on as normal so if you start wondering what I'm doing well then you need to look at that video so we're told that a boat has a mass 120 kilos a man pulls it in shallow waters by means of a horizontal rope the resistance to motion is 40 newtons and the tension is 100 newtons find the acceleration of the boat so we need to draw a free body diagram of the forces on the boat we know its weight is 120 kilograms. So we know by Newton's first, excuse me, Newton's second law, that F is equal to m times a. So the force vector is equal to the mass 120 times the acceleration, which is g. Now this is a negative number because g is a negative number, and it's going in not the, not the i hat, but rather the j hat direction. So what we can do as a result of that is draw on the fact that we have the weight vector is equal to 120 g j hat. We need a Newton's third law action reaction pair here. So this is the force of the boat on the earth. Now we have the force of the earth on the boat. So this is the normal vector and its magnitude is equal to a negative or oh, it's equal to 120 g so that this is equal to negative 120 g j hat. All right, this is a positive number because I define gravity as being negative. Next, we have the, the resistance force going, I'm going to say, in negative i. So the resistance force, its magnitude is equal to 40 newtons, and the resistance is negative 40 i hat, like so. The next thing I'm going to draw is the rope. Now remember, the rope is being pulled by a man. So let's analyze the forces on the rope. So we have... This one here, the force of the man on the rope. The man is pulling it. By Newton's third law, every action has an equal but opposite reaction. So I'm going to draw this vector, the force of the rope on the man. Remember, you just interchange the subscripts. Similarly over here, we have the force of the rope on the boat. And we have here the force of the boat on the rope. Alright, so there are four vectors, two of them are action-reaction pairs. So let's just move the rope down here to deal with it. So we're going to redraw the rope. And now, what forces are acting on the rope? These are the ones that have the boat, or excuse me, the rope as the second letter. So we have in this direction the force of the man on the rope, and this direction the force of the uh, boat on the rope. And they're going in opposite directions. Are they an action-reaction pair? The answer is no, because here are the action-reaction pairs. But also, if you look, it's not just an exchange of their subscripts. Now, the man is pulling the boat by 100 newtons. So the force of the man on the rope is equal to 100 newtons. That's the first thing. Now we know by Newton's second law that the sum of the forces is equal to the mass times the acceleration. Therefore, we have F, B, R plus FMR, these are both acting on the boat, or on the rope, excuse me, is equal to the mass of the rope times the acceleration of the rope. Now what happens if there is, if this is non-zero? That means there is an overall force and that the rope is accelerating. Okay, and that's no good to us because that makes this a very difficult question. So what the book should tell you is that the mass of the rope is equal to zero. It is a massless rope. But of course it doesn't say that. So I'm going to tell you that it is a massless rope. And look what happens if that turns out to be zero. We're going to get that the magnitude of the force of the boat on the rope is equal in magnitude to the force of the man on the rope. And we know the force of the man on the rope is 100. So what we can say is that we have 100 being pulled left and 100 being pulled right. But these are not action-reaction pairs. Alright, that's the very important thing here. So let's just get rid of this, this bit here and go back up to our initial diagram. 
So what is the action-reaction pair with FBR, the force of the boat on the rope? So we know the force of the boat on the rope is equal to negative the force of the rope on the boat. So 100 is equal to negative the force of the rope on the boat. So the rope is pulling the boat by 100 newtons. Alright? That's what that means. So, and the reason this is important is because you'll see your teacher doing it and everybody will do it. They'll just draw the rope and immediately say there's a tension here and there's a tension here. And if this is equal to 100, then so is this. And this would imply that they are an action-reaction repair, but they're not. But this is correct, but they're not an action-reaction pair. So I just want to be rigorous, at least at the start. Alright, so this may, that might seem that I'm doing it for no reason, but I think it's quite important. So really what we have, in terms of the boat, we have 100 units going this way. So let's use Newton's second law. Some of the forces, Ma, some of the forces, is equal to uh, negative 40i, positive 100i, positive 120gj, negative 120gj. So the sum of the forces is equal to 60i hat. That's equal to the mass by acceleration. And we know the mass is 120. Therefore, A is equal to half meters per second squared. Correct. All right. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, that The hard part is understanding Newton's third law, in my opinion. All right. Now, the next thing we're, we're asked to do is find out what happens if his wife gets on the boat and she weighs 60 kilos. So let's just go straight back up here. If she weighs 60 kilos, the weight of the overall body now becomes 180 kilos. So I can change this to 180 kilos, and change this to 180, and change this one to 180. But if you remember, the overall force, the sum of the forces, was equal to 60 i hat. It had no j hat component at all. So the weight, the fact that she changes the weight won't matter at all. But what will matter is that F is equal to MA. So we now have 60 is equal to 180 A, and you're going to A is equal to third meters per second squared. Correct. So it doesn't affect the force, but because the mass has changed, the acceleration must change. So thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.